A few years ago, I played a match against Liam Robinson, a professional golfer who's played on the European Tour and Challenge Tour. Great drive. Oh, there she is. You can probably guess how that match went. We got annihilated. After we played, Liam was kind enough to help me out with my swing and he shared the drills that he'd used previously to transform his own game. I started working with my coach in Australia and these drills single-handedly like started to transform my golf game and all my swing is now developed around these kind of techniques. That summer, I practiced the drills that Liam gave me in my back garden a ton and I ended up hitting it about as well as I ever have. It was the first time in my life that I started shooting under par with some regularity. All right, nobody likes a show off. Unfortunately, at the end of that year, a few things happened in my life, which meant that I stopped playing golf. And then... Good evening, the coronavirus. After that, I moved across the country, took up surfing, and basically before I knew it, quite a few years had gone past without me playing any golf. I took it up again just under two years ago. And since then, I've had some good rounds and some bad rounds, but I've never quite got back to swinging it and hitting it as well as I would like. Oh, that's horrible. So when Liam offered to help me out again, obviously I jumped at the chance. So this video is that lesson. I think the big thing, mate, if we can kind of give you what you need, but massively explain to you why, yeah. I think that's also a big thing. I think sometimes knowing what you thought to get to where you are today is really, really important. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I always thought from hitting it heavy, yeah. I must be like too much back yeah. on my right foot. And if I then get massively here, yeah. I can't help but like hit down on it and get the ball first. Yeah, which is crazy, which is so crazy in golf because it's, it's about how certain forces somewhere create a different force somewhere else and it's all just reactive stuff. So actually like the more you move forwards, obviously it leaves the club head back and it's just, it's the force constantly for strike. What, it, what you've got to essentially create is the right force on the golf club yeah. so that the club can kind of throw in and pull back out and at the right point in the ground. And I think a lot of the time people think to get, it's no different when people talk about chipping, is it? It's like people want to get the strike. They just start getting more and yeah, more and more yeah. and more forwards yeah. to try and get it there. And a lot of coaches now will tell you that's wrong. Um, yeah. I don't think it's any different really in, in the long game because you look at most of the best players, they're not moving into it to then stay there and open up. They're using it to then push up and back. Yeah. And I think that then allows you to throw the club more in then that'll fix strike. But strike, I, I don't anticipate strike taking as long to get back, if I'm honest. Um, strike's not too difficult to get back. Where are we aiming? Good question. Uh, like, see that left 150? Yeah. <laughs> I meant the right 100. Yes. Well, yeah, that um, definitely isn't the Rob McGar I know. <laughs> no. No. You know that I obviously like to video uh, face on quite a bit, but down the line obviously gives us some indication as to what's happening there too. Yeah. I think there's a couple of things that stand out straight away here, Rob, and is obviously how steep you get it yeah. in transition. Um, that's not not great because the golf club at some point has to fall down so we it's still steep even through here mate if i'm honest yeah, yeah. Um, every time i video it i feel like it looks so steep I just yeah don't seem to be able to... and then the club's too in front of you there so then you can't release it and then on the way through the the real clear one is obviously how much you start to lose the face through there just it's really up. it's really steep on the way out too because yeah. realistically the club shouldn't be looking anything like that we should have it coming more through your kind of left shoulder and and have the face looking back more at the camera. Um, and then you look at kind of where the ball's taking off there, it's starting way right and cutting. Yeah. So if we have a quick look then from face on, if there's anything we see in particular. So you can see there that your pelvis level is, your left pelvis is below your right. So that's not great when we need to move into that position in transition. Okay. You then look at kind of where your belt buckle would be in relation to the ball there. And you just look a little bit kind of cramped, yeah, yeah. bit stuck, bit cramped. Yeah. Haven't quite got that leg motion that we that we like when you've been swinging good. 
and then from that then we kind of really lose the hands on the way through yeah. really opening the shoulders but so what we've got to do is just fix a couple of things just to get you kind of getting everything working together again really and i don't mean when i say that i don't mean arms hands and body working together what i mean is is the kind of using the force in the ground a bit better so that then you can put the correct force on the on the grip end of the club again so you can then start delivering the club a little bit more like you'd want to and just allow you to get a bit of freedom again that everything feels how it should. The biggest thing that we've got to fix is obviously the club's two in front on the way down. Uh -huh. So that's always going to make you feel really cramped and like you've got nowhere to go because for you, look, I, I don't like the club being through your forearm because it looks good on Instagram. The reason I like it is I feel that gives you the best opportunity to release the golf club from there. So once you've got it in that nicer, shallower position, you can then obviously start to release the golf club a little bit easier. Whereas once you get it a bit out in front of you, you can't release that. So the only thing you can do is keep holding and keep turning. Yeah. And then you end up then with that kind of look on the way out because you end up too ahead of it. Yeah. Um, so a couple of things we need to fix is obviously how you're delivering the club. Um, in the backswing, we've kind of got to fix this little bit of this, this loss. You, you don't lose your leg like you used to. If you remember when we first met, you used to kind of be like this, yeah. but you can still see that you still want to just drop this left pelvis a little low. The problem, the reaction for that is then that the pelvis is always going to want to go kind of like this underneath it in transition. So if we can fix that a little bit and then on the way out, because you've been trying to turn more, what ends up happening is when you get this club out in front and you start to kind of get open to it, it puts a different kind of force on the grip. So what you tend to see that people get open is that the club doesn't tend to travel in that direction with you. What tends to happen as you get open is that then it kind of pushes the grip more that way yeah whereas actually the more shut off you can feel so you can release it the club will exit more left and more stable but you won't have gone that way does that make sense yeah, yeah, so it's yeah. almost like opposites yeah. tend to work better together yeah um so we'll get into it but i think initially we've got to fix that backswing a little yeah. um kind of not allowing you to lose this then in transition we can get you making a better move into the golf ball because the reaction in your pelvis won't be so kind of this way. It will be more kind of up and then you can work down onto it a little more and be a bit more shut off. Yeah. Then we'll be able to release the club properly and then we'll be able to hopefully start striking it a little bit better. Yeah. There you go. I think that hip position for us is probably... It's weird because obviously I'm not doing that intentionally. No, of course you're not. And I feel like I've had a habit, and I don't know if it's like to do with mobility or flexibility, or whatever, yeah. of like kind of lifting up and out of it a bit yeah. so i don't know if it's because i'm trying to just like turn you know like you see that stuff where it's like yeah. you're in a little barrel effectively or whatever yeah lines here rather than swaying out of it yeah, yeah. just turning there so obviously yeah. that then perhaps is like yeah what's dropping this left hip down that's definitely what's created that and then this lift feel you're talking about if you imagine like if you max out your arm swing that's as far as you can that you can go yeah so you've got two options from there you then either turn and lift which is kind of what you're doing. You're, you're almost kind of maxing this out and then getting a bit this way. So one thing that we definitely need to help you get is a little more club travel. Um, club travel's massive because that club should almost be kind of, before you even really start doing anything, that club should almost be up here. Yeah. And then what happens then as you get to about here, it's carrying enough speed that it will pull you to the top. Whereas when you haven't got that, you then have to try and create it yourself. So yeah. I think that's what you're seeing there. Yeah, because I just feel like, we were talking before I put the camera on, that kind of mine's just like here yeah, and it's yeah. droopy, almost yeah. as if the club is really heavy. Yeah. Rather than like having any kind of... Thing set. is though, like it should be early on. Like if you watch how a club naturally loads, so a club naturally should look like, if you imagine that I'm like doing this, mm -hmm. the club naturally should almost load like that and then it will flick yeah. here. The thing is you start trying to do it from here and it's all too narrow then. Right. So then you have to do all this kind of stuff. Whereas like, I'm almost loading it more like, yeah. like that, almost dragging it. Yeah. Um, and you, you'll get the same look on camera. You'll just get it at the right time. Yeah. Whereas obviously you start hinging, you're then gonna, it, that's a, a hinge is more of like a rigid motion. Um, so yeah, so you'll struggle with that a little bit. Um, but what, what I think the best place to start, if we just, with a towel, if we just do a left hand back, two hand hit, mm -hmm. okay, what that should give you a good introduction into is like stepping, that should deal with the pelvis. And then 
with the left hand only in the backswing, it's going to make it heavy. So you're going to have to participate everything at the right time. And it should also introduce you a little bit to the club travel. Right. So just hit a couple of these for me and we'll get this looking really good. So it's going to be... A little step to the trail side. Yeah. Then you can start taking it back. And when you get to about here, you'll pop this hand on, then step forwards and hit. Okay. Do you want me to do a demo? Yeah, go on, yeah. I've never done this one before. Cool. Yeah. So what you're going to do, you're going to take a step to your trail side, mm -hmm. take it away, and then when you start coming into here, you're going to pop this hand on and step in, and then give it a whack. So it'll be like step, back, on, and hit. Okay. So a little double step. Nice, good. And what? Uh, try and kind of get the right hand on a little later. Later, yeah. So yeah, if you can do it kind of when you feel like you're getting rib, rib to shoulder height, that I think that would be a okay. better for you. Because for you, the longer you can feel that, I think that'll keep you up more right. and get you tra transitioning weight a little better. Nice, Rob, good. Beautiful. <laughs> it's a little better. So what we've added essentially with the steps is a lateral phase rather than just going straight into rotational and what you'll notice then is how much higher obviously your pelvis stays yeah that then allows your pelvis to work down and in and then you can start looking a bit more athletic through your lower body and then you can start releasing the golf club again oh, yeah. so that and what you'll notice is you get the old scheffler slide <laughs> yeah so generally yeah. that's a sign of like great lower body motion so the fact that he's as good as he is, no <laughs> yeah. surprise really. But I tend to see that a lot with guys that do these drills is they start to slide that right foot in and they start to fire that right side at the correct time. Yeah. That's, that's literally as good as it can get really. Like pelvis works in beautifully. And then you can just release the golf club. I mean, it certainly looks a lot more athletic. Yeah, my right foot definitely doesn't feel like that normally. No. It feels like it's kind of pitching up onto exactly. my toes. And... So then we look from down the line and what that creates. So swing plane in transition starts to get more behind you so that then you can deliver the club for a better release pattern. So it's less in front, starts traveling a bit more that way. Yeah. So that then you can actually start to release the golf club a little bit better on the way out. And that's literally kind of like first goes if you watch that at full speed. Just motion wise, it's just like this is just amazing. And all, all it is really is creating a lateral phase into both directions of your golf swing. Yeah. Um, you don't need to demonize lateral if it is done the right way. Like through there, there's no, there's no hip shift or anything like that. It's actually the upper body working better. And then that is just perfect really for you being able to really throw that club in and stabilize everything. Because it looks like my left leg's kind of posting up more and getting out of the way, whereas yeah. whenever I video my swing, but I feel like my legs are kind of still. That, that's because of, if you look now where your hip, where your pelvis position is in relation to your the back of the towel. Yeah. Now all of a sudden you're moving into it from behind it, so now your centre of pressure, which would be in your feet, mm. is ahead of your centre of mass. So now all of a sudden this is all light enough for you to be able to use the energy you've created in your foot to be able to push up push out, yeah. to create the room for the release pattern that we're trying to create. Obviously, if you don't push up and you don't create that room, the only other way you've got to get in out of it is to go open to it and swipe across it. Yeah. So that is a lot more kind of what I'd be looking for. Yeah. It's a great job. Yeah. <laughs> Big differences, isn't it? Yeah. You look way more rotational, but you're trying to yeah. turn less. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And then from face on, it's not even the same golf swing, really. Big difference in that. It looks like so cramped and horrible in my normal. Yeah. Really? And the problem is that's going to make you want to go out of it a certain way. Like if we, so this is obviously the uh, top of the back swing. Yeah. Transition. Impact. Yeah. A little better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just more athletic, mate. Yeah, that's all it, it is. It's just. It feels more athletic as yeah. well. And, and the thing is, you can get that feedback like instantly just from the towel. Yeah. Like it's crazy. Obviously, there's going to be questions of how do I hit a golf ball like yeah. that? Um, 
But what you've got, what, what you've got to start really thinking is just when I'm doing this drill, what am I doing? Essentially, you're you're creating a lateral phase in your backswing. You're getting more club travel. Um, you're kind of starting to incorporate your lead side a little more, which, as I've said to you in the past, like as golfers, you're right-handed. You're playing right-handed golf. You're going to be more dominant in your trail side, so you're going to want to pull that away in the backswing. You're going to want to fire it in the transition by kind of starting to feel a bit more lead-sided through that drill by getting you to do it one-handed. It allows you to start participating your left side a little bit better, um, and that's why you're seeing the lateral load, you're seeing the club traveling right. more and you're seeing better, better angles. So yeah. yeah, so let's do a couple more of those yep. and just really start to get comfortable with the timing of it, Rob. Yeah, so you know you said about putting my right hand on later. Yeah. So let me just go for it in like slow motion style. Yeah, yeah. So I'll see here, little step to the right as yeah. this starts to take away. Yeah, from feeling like that lead peck, lead scaps like pushing away. So yeah. you're almost pushing energy like this from up here. What you see a lot of people when they talk about lateral is they go like that, don't they? Yeah and that creates more of an issue. So it's like, when are you feeling lateral? I want you to feel it more in your sternum, right. like a bit more over there, yeah, that's it. Yeah. So you feel like you're so pushing that energy pushing away. Pushing that away, and then... Yeah. You're gonna pop it on around there somewhere. So about what feels like kind of the top? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, to you, it will feel like you're doing it a lot later than you are. Yeah. Like obviously the first one, you almost popped your right hand on about here. Do you right. know what I mean? But again, that's, that's like an internal timing thing that like you'll get used to. The, yeah. And that's why I said do a couple more so you can get the feels of it. Yeah, yeah the later you feel that, the better. Okay. So little step, take it away, beautiful, amazing. And what you should feel like as you're coming through impact is you've just got more space yeah. to be able to feel like you can actually throw the club again. Yeah. You think back to that first video we did of like the left arm only throws, like when we were in the range at time, like that's almost, you've got to create the space to be able to do that. Yeah. Like, and that's why kind of when we've talked about stuff, you'll notice over the last couple of weeks, we can't do the lead arm throws again. Yeah, yeah. If you imagine trying to do that from like here, <laughs> And here, yeah. of course you can't throw it into the towel. So that's why you've got to deal with this bit first, because yeah. we'll probably move into a little bit of that after this. Yeah. Right, little step. Oh, forgot to put my right hand on yeah. this. But I tell you what though, it looked like a move. <laughs> it looked better. <laughs> but that's the good thing about these drills, mate. Like the thing is you can do 20 of them a day and you'll start just timing it all up. Like yeah. you can get better without having to hit balls. You don't need to be on the driving range hitting thousands of balls just doing what you normally do. Yeah. Pop it on, beautiful, mate. How good is that? <laughs> like you can just hear it, can't you? Yeah. Like, and, and you look like you're just moving. It definitely feels like I'm in a different place on the way down. Yeah. Well, luckily because of the video, we know you are. Yeah. <laughs> and it just looks less like this. Yeah. Yeah, it feels Cramp. like this kind of room here for me to sort yeah. of straighten my arms effectively. Well, yeah, you're releasing Rather the Rather than like I'm here trying to kind of chop and find the right uh, yeah. distance between me and the ground. Exactly, and you think about a release pattern, a release is this, isn't it? So you say straight arms, it's because you've gone like that. Yeah. <laughs> so you've released your arms fully and released yeah. the golf club. And obviously if you haven't created the room to release that, you'll hit it miles behind. Yeah. So that's why, the, that's why the move in is really important. And you mentioned the posting up, that's why that's important. Create the room for it. Right, go on then buddy, same again. That's ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> like Rob, look at that. Like, it doesn't even look like you. It doesn't, no, you're right. <laughs> it really doesn't. But how beautiful is it? Like you move on it and then it's just, yeah, just zip through. Because I, I, like when I've talked in the past with my coach, like he talks about kind of the gears of the golf swing and like, the, the, what you're seeing when that foot's sliding and that last bit is like the right gear finally kicking in. Yeah. So it's like left, 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 right. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? Like in regards to what side you're using. And because you're so like, most people are so underdeveloped in their lead side that they go kind of trail, 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 yeah. <laughs> trail. And they never actually do anything with this lead side, which is then why it looks like it does and, and folds across it a little bit. But look at like, you look at that as a pattern in relation to where you were. And then it's smash. So yeah. you deliver it and then it can just go. Yeah. <laughs> it's different, isn't it? Oh yeah. That's so good, mate, that is, by the way. Like, that's a joke. Yeah. Then you can just fire it. Then, then your right side just turns the jets on. Yeah. Because your body's just going, oh, <laughs> oh. Yeah, it does feel like that. Yeah, like, that's what it looks yeah. like. Yeah. It looks free. It looks effortless, it looks comfortable, which is, 
Like if you were gonna go and if you were gonna go and throw a ball, if you were gonna go hit a base, you, you wouldn't do half the things we do in the golf zone. Yeah. So, I mean, you wouldn't throw a golf ball and go yeah. like that. You'd go, wouldn't you? Yeah. It's no different. Like to me, it's like the same kind of motion. I know. Yeah, that's the thing. Like my swing starts to feel almost unnatural. Yeah. I'm like this doesn't feel right. No. And that's what's crazy about a lot of you guys is you have you have enough awareness inside to be like there's something wrong here. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But then it's like getting to the right stuff is the hardest bit. This is a great way of you starting. I think this left hand is like a real good introduction one for you. It's just different gravy. It's weird because you know how a week or two ago I was talking to you yeah. about, oh, I tried to do all that like steep to shallow stuff. Yeah. And it didn't work. Yeah. But obviously I'm not thinking about trying to no. shallow it no. now. If anything, you'd probably be a little bit shallower in the back swing too, because that's because yeah. by getting it more this way, yeah. it's easy to kind of. I don't really, I don't really understand this whole concept of why. Why would you want to take it that way to go this way? Yeah. Like, surely if you just put it there, you can then move more naturally and just leave it there. Yeah. Um, but that's like you look at that from from forearm. Like that's just ridiculous. Yeah. That doesn't even look like you. No. <laughs> Does it? It doesn't feel like me either. Again, if we're going, I'll, I'll screenshot these ones too. Yeah, it's real. I feel like it's just turning into like Ben Hogan or something. <laughs> in, in one drill. <laughs> so the crazy thing is, look how much more rotated on the right you look, but you're not trying to turn. Yeah. That's the crazy thing is like the less you're trying to turn, the more rotational you look because you're releasing the club more, which allows it to pull you through more. Right. And, then you, and then you deliver, obviously, post impact. Like, again, look how much more rotational you look. Yeah. But you're trying not to turn. <laughs> Stupid, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. How can you look more rotational when you've literally tried to turn less? Yeah, it looks like it's kept me in a better sort of posture as well. Yeah. It has. Rather than like, I haven't turned, I'm sort of cramped over it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> kind of rounded in your upper body. Yeah. This way and then that way. Yeah. Rather than kind of... Here, here. You always do upsettingly accurate impressions of my sweat. <laughs> <laughs> that was your legs. Mate, I can kind of feel like just off the sound it's making when you're hitting balls, it's like I can almost feel what you'd look like. Yeah. But that's because I've hit a million balls myself. Like I haven't just coached, like obviously I've played for the last 15 years. So yeah. I know I've hit a billion golf balls. So I know, I know what a sound would feel like and yeah. look like so like even like when I'm watching you from here the thing I'm seeing is the terms I'd use when I watch you from here on the towel is it doesn't look clunky yeah it, there's no collisions happening there you can see ha the freedom you can just see it's like and everything's firing through at the right time whereas normally you kind of look like you said it just looks a bit cramped a bit open and a bit yeah like that way which again you've talked about losing a bit of distance you're losing strike and it's not overly surprising now you've seen what your body's capable of it's not overly surprising that the previous one is a little yeah it just underperforming it just doesn't feel like i'm in a good spot no like I'm trying to kind of then rescue something to make a half decent contact and yeah. hit like an acceptable golf shot yeah and like i would say i've got really like defensive yeah so rather than ever thinking like oh fancy this shot yeah I'm like, oh. i don't want to miss here yeah and it's like okay i'm just gonna have to and obviously, I know part of that golf strategy, right? You don't just like go and fire every pin. No, of course you don't. But at the same time, like, I'd like to feel good over some shot. Yeah. Well, the, the problem you've got is, mate, if you if you haven't got strike, you haven't got distance control. Yeah. If you haven't got like, if if you're if you've got that plane you've got in the initial transition, the problem is you've got low left and big right in there. Yeah. So it's like, which one's going to come? If you yeah, hook the yeah. face down, you're going to low hook it. If you if you don't, you're going to hit a slice. And it's just like, yeah. if you've got a two way miss and you don't know how far it's going. Yeah. you're not going to be feeling the best over the ball, no, are no. you? Yeah. Um, so what you're looking for, ideally, is just a bit of predictability. And that's why I say to you about these drills. The reason I like people to look more athletic is it's more of a natural way. So what you've noticed, by you looking more athletic, you now feel like the club's in a better position for you to release it. Yeah. If you can release it, we should generally find it easier to strike the golf ball, which then means at least we're going to get rid, hopefully, of this bit. You're not going to fat one 100 yards short and you're not going to knife it... Do you know what I mean? Long yeah. or whatever. You're not, and then and then and then from there, then you can like what I said to you. Like before we even started, I said strike should be easy enough. We should find that easy enough to get back. Then it's like working in the ball flight that you want, yeah. and we can go from there. But 
So what I'm going to get you to do, I think, oh mate, also, how far left are those divots? Yeah, I know. Jeez. Yeah, that's the thing. Someone's even want to hit. I've only just realised those. <laughs> Someone's even want to hit an okay shot. I look at the divot. It's like literally 45 degrees left. Yeah. Right. What we're going to move into, is just without thinking, I want you to kind of really create some hyper awareness of what you're feeling on here. Okay. And then what I want you to do then is literally without real any thought, I want you just to walk into the ball, hit it two-handed, mm -hmm. and just hit it and just see what happens. Rip steps. Uh, no. Right. Just, but just, when you're doing the step, what are you doing? Like, you've got to have that yeah, physical so, thought of like, what am I doing when I'm stepping? Yeah, so even yesterday when I was doing the step drills in my garden, yeah. I noticed that rather than like being really static, as I was kind of preparing, I was sort of moving my feet. Yeah. You know, like kind of the long drive guys yeah. do. So it's just like much more kind of dynamic. And then I was like, right, there's my step. Do you know, mate, how many lessons I have? And somebody will come in and they'll, I'll go, right, hit me some balls and I'll get some video and they'll go. Yeah. And then they go, and away they go. And like that's obviously an extreme version, but amazing how many people before they hit the ball just completely glue themselves to the ground. Yeah. And then in that time, tension creeps in, thought processes creep in. And like, whereas the minute you get them to do a step drill, so I'll get somebody to do one step drill. Next time they stand over the ball without realizing it, they're like this. Yeah. And they've got no idea why I like, and it's amazing that every single person does it. All of a sudden they start, creating this like subconscious awareness of like the ground yeah. and, and, their, and their interaction with it is, it is quite funny. Well, it's weird because you see people like, you know, still on the tee yeah. and they're just like frozen for yeah. 10 seconds. Exactly. You think, That's never going to be a good That result, can't be ideal. No. no, which is why like... Because like no other athletic motion do you do of course that? It, of course you I mean like, it's yeah. like cliche, but you're playing tennis mm -hmm. and you stand there like yeah. rigid, <laughs> yeah. like moving all the time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, it's literally, it, mate, it's, it's crazy this game how it's probably one of the most athletic games in the world. Yeah. When you think about it, you're swinging a golf club. Some people are swinging a club at 130 mile an hour. Yeah. And it's like, but yet you're taught in a way of like, it's all very externally motivated. Were well, you trying to like control it every yeah. all the time? And it's like, why? Just Because yeah. the thing, the crazy thing is the people that try and control it, generally they hit it offline anyway. Yeah. So it's like, you might as well, let it go and yeah. just and then and then deal with it after rather than fearing it and hitting a bad shot anyway yeah. um but yeah so so like that's the reason i like to do this so what i want you to create is almost like this awareness of what you're feeling yeah. walk into a golf ball just try and feel it okay and again i'll probably give it like i'll tell you after the first shot how many balls i think it'll take you but nice rob oh towel's in the way that's not going to help us do it quickly, is it? So I hit right. this one, yeah. And then just, yeah, just walk into the ball. Again, yeah. not too much thought. Just try and feel what you just felt. Okay? Right. I reckon four balls I'm going. Four? Four. Four, you were like eight. Yeah, I think four. No, only because you thinned it, which is a good sign. Is it? Well, yeah, because it means that you're less this way. Yeah. And less, the club's less behind you. So all, the, all that requires now is for you to actually release the golf club on the end of it. Okay. So, step. It. Nice, Rob. See, that's, stun that's a stunning rep. See, that right. felt good. Yeah, now just feel it. What did you feel? A little heavier. All right, just hit a couple more, bud. All right, so. So, step, back, step, hit, beautiful, onto the ball. Put me under pressure here, I've got two left. <laughs> Fine. So, what did you feel? That little move off, let the club yeah. go. Better. Better. And what's crazy is there is like, look how much shallower that is. Yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah. So that's that's what I explained to you earlier. So the more you move this way with that centre and it's ahead of it, the club head tends to stay back. The more that you kind of keep the mass behind it so you can then push up and back, that tends to throw. Like, you know, as you're kind of getting that slide that you see on the video, yeah. you throw the club forwards with it, which yeah. pulls it out the ground. So that's essentially what you're, that's essentially the relationship you've got. Your right side's throwing it down and then the left side pulls it out the ground. Whereas okay, yeah. because you're like ahead of it and it's heavy, you don't get any of that pull up and out. So you end up across and deep. Whereas that is more, that's more playable, isn't it? Yeah. Like what you've got there. You're not gonna, you're certainly not gonna have to worry about, I mean, you're, not have to, you're not gonna have to worry about fat in that one, are you? No. And that definitely seems to be the worry here is like that, you know, the, the heavy strike. Yeah. It's that, yeah, because it's so like steep. Obviously, if I hit it ball first, it's like kind of a squeezy like cut. Yeah. And if I don't, then it's like super fat. Yeah, exactly. So same thing, mate. Just that hyper awareness. 
So just build on that last rep. Beautiful, man. Stunning. Straight into the ball. And just feeling that left arm, pushing that away with that left arm. Feel like you're really shifting. And then go. There you go. Nice. You can see it. It felt good. Pure. Look at, look at that divot as well. I like how much shallower that is. Yeah. In relation to like, you look at like the depth of these ones. Yeah. And then you look at that and that one. That was ripped by the way. Was it? Yeah. What I wanted to hear off that fourth one was just that sound you created. Yeah. You know that like, yeah, you, yeah. Could hear the, yeah. you could hear the club and you could hear what the ball sounded like. It, it sounded like it was coming off the face a bit hotter, didn't it? Yeah. It was a bit more. Yeah, it felt better as well off the face. Good. Well, let's just keep doing this. Let's do another like six of these. Left arm back. Mate, that's so good. <laughs> then when you come into the ball, just start kind of organising those feels. So it's like yeah. you're shifting off it a bit more, you kind of got that little lateral phase and your left arm's pushing away a bit more. Nice, Rob. It felt better down here. Look great. I don't know, I couldn't see it again. It's gone exactly where the, first, the last one did. All right. If you look at those two divots and you listen to the sound, they're identical. Yeah. I think this feel for you, like from what I'm here, from what I'm hearing from the, I'm obviously quite intuitive. Like when I'm talking to you, I'm saying certain things at certain times. Yeah. And I think the reason I've said to you about the left arm pushing away is that we've done the step drills over the last week and it didn't, they look better, but they didn't look exactly how we want it to look. This drill, looks exactly how we wanted it to look so and it, it just looks incredible from this angle so what i'd say to you is um the reason i keep mentioning the left arm feel is i've got a sneaky suspicion that that left arm is going to be big for us in regards to feeling you know like when you're doing this kind of action so when you then can't move it's like it's still just feeling that moving but right. allowing the left arm to really feel like it's like pushing because I think that is what's going to give you that little bit more. You know, you talked about the set. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be what gives you a little more of that. Yeah. Um, and equally, I think that's what shallowed it out a lot because you haven't got this kind of, this yeah. kind of look. I think that's I think that's really big that that right arm doesn't start to take over for you. Yeah. So when you talk about pushing yeah. with the left arm, is that like more? What it is, is like the, this way, the direction of the energy you're pushing it. So it's like, if you imagine we've done like towel pushbacks in the past, yeah. you're obviously like pushing right. energy like this way, yeah. rather than rather than kind of going... You're just lifting it. This way, yeah. yeah. It's like getting it more away from you. Yeah. There you go, beautiful, mate. Yeah. You look so good when you swing it left hand back. It just, it just looks like it times everything up for you. Yeah. Gets you the right club travel, the right shift. Same thing. Beautiful. Right, so just feel those same things. Okay, and we're gonna go shift off, left arm. A little heavier. Just spray you in mud. A little bit, <laughs> I managed to dodge it. <laughs> so same thing, left arm back. So good shift in the lower body, good step in. Left arm, nice Rob, into the ball. All right, so feel that left arm move off. There you go, stunning. Exactly the same shot again. Yeah? Yeah, perfect. And that, that one matches up perfectly to those two, doesn't it? So at like the four balls, you've got three perfect, and then one where yeah, you get I mean, a little bit Yeah, I feel like stick. there's a lot more space yeah. down here. Yeah. Because normally if I feel like I sort of do any kind of release, yeah. I just like fat it even more. Or... Yeah. Well, well, if you've got the club too in front of you too early, yeah. you've got nowhere to release it if you did like properly you'd almost miss it wouldn't you yeah if you've got the club out here and then you released it you'd obviously miss the ball so like by you kind of getting that feel of like moving more here so you can it's the recentering is what shallows it right i mean so it's like this and then this is what shallows the golf club it's like a change of direction and it's not just changing direction right to left it's like the direction that you use the force so i can still kind of use the force that way but it's it's using the force like this way so that then you can use that to pull up and get you out the ground. Um, but yeah, that I'll be honest, mate. Like that looks, it looks a lot more like something we can work with yeah. when you do that left hand back two hand hit than than obviously what we started with yeah. those first couple of videos. So again, a little step, really kind of push it away. Nice, Rob. Nice, beautiful. So left arm push away. You steepened that massively and you, you, yanked, you pulled on that and opened up a little. Right. So that one there, you've kind of gone here nicely and then you've gone 
like that. So if that, if that does become something we see numerous times here, if you think a couple of drills that are in the network, the walk-ins, so what you would see, that would give you your indication as to exactly what you want to do because what you'd see with you if, you, if that is what you do, is you would see every time you step in, you'd literally like be pulling yeah, down. Yeah. Whereas when I do it, it's more yeah. like that. And, but again, we've only seen that the once on these balls or twice, because obviously you, you fatted one earlier. So if that becomes something we see, then that would probably just be another drill that we add in as part of your core drills, yeah. just to help you feel that your arms stay up a bit longer. And then what we can do then, so if you make a backswing, just one hand only and stop with the step and then put your hand on and stop. Right, now there, as you make your move in, so make your little move back towards, there you go. Right, you feel that little resistance against yeah. me. That's almost what we need to right. feel so that then you can start to then use that and then let it come down. Right. And you'll notice straight away where that club is. It's not out in front of you. Yeah, yeah. Whereas if you go to the top again and you go, yeah. now you're stuck. Yeah, Do you yeah. see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's essentially what that is. So if, if we're starting to see an issue with that, then we would then add the swing thoughts would obviously be like, right, trail side, make sure I shift off left arm. And then at the top, you just feel like you're just leaving your arms up a little right. longer. Okay. One of the little thing as well, mate, when you're doing the step um, back and the backswing, just try and feel like you're keeping your upper rib cage a little bit more up. Don't kind of want to follow it with your eyes and stay down. Yeah. Just feel like you're keeping a little bit of pitch in your sternum. There you go. Because obviously in transition, we're wanting to move down and in. So if you've already kind of got rid of that a little bit through here, there's a couple of ways that people can look left in their spine. Number one is keeping too much pressure there. Number two is actually just, if you tend to lose height here, you'll tend to also tilt a little bit that way. Yeah. So just keep a little eye on that too, as yeah. you're doing it, if we're being super critical. Yeah. But obviously if you're talking just improvement anyway, like it's not, it wouldn't be something I'd be massively dwelling over right now. Okay. Nice, Rob, beautiful. Right, so just feel that left side's kind of moving off of it. There you go. Nice. So it felt like a bit softer at yeah. the top there rather than like trying yeah, to. Rather than yanking it in. And just it. kind of wait, letting. The thing is, the body should lead. So it should literally be almost like here, here, then the arms come yeah. as I push up. Whereas, like, obviously, if you get them down in front of you before you've got the room for them, again, you're just going to feel cramped. And then yeah. you're going to feel like you've got to get wide open to it for you to be able to yeah. get back to the golf ball correctly. What was that one like? That was nice. Was it? Yeah, they've all been pretty flush, mate. Like, if you look at, you've hit five really good ones out of the last eight. So, yeah. they're all going in the same place. Yeah. So, it's a good sign. Nice, Rob. Beautiful. All right. So, when you come in. Nope. Another faceful. Got a bit too close. I'm going to have to start standing over here, yeah. I think. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's definitely the transitional difference, mate. So if we get you to do a couple of walk-ins, mm -hmm. so literally, what I'm gonna do, pass you a club a set, if we can get you just to do a couple of these, and I think these can almost just become your core, your core ones. So you're gonna take a couple of steps back from the towel, you're gonna swing to the top, and you could do that one-handed if you want to, blend it in together. Then you're gonna walk in, walk in, and hit, uh -huh. okay? And what that's doing is, it's giving you the sensation of coming into it from behind, which is never a bad thing anyway. But the big thing is like not to add on. And what I mean by that is, is kind of not to, as you're taking the step in, most people that have got this little twitch would pull their arms down and then they try and create speed up here again to hit it. Yeah. So just make sure as you're doing it, I love this drill. This is like a big one for me because I, I have a tendency to add on a little as well. So like I tend to get it a bit steep at times. So literally kind of to the top, in, in, and smack. So that kind of keeping the arms up stops that sort of pulling stops in the transition. Yank, yeah. It's just an awareness of your body moving in without your arms controlling it. Yeah. So it gives you that separation of feeling your body go a bit first. Yeah. Because to be honest, mate, like the difference just off of doing the left hand back and hits is like, if you're thinking five out of eight, hopefully in two weeks time, That'll be six, seven, eight out of eight. Yeah, and yeah. do you know what I mean? As you get used to the field, because yeah. you're still going to want to attack the ball. Even though we fixed the backswing, you're still going to want to attack it how you have been doing for the last year. 
So it's just blending over then of the reactions starting to change. And that's why drills like this one are great because we're giving you a feel again for that too. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, I don't think it's too much either for a first lesson. I don't, th I don't think it is. I think it's still quite, I think it just blends in perfectly because you took the first drill on board so quickly. Yeah. Um, like it's not a problem adding in something else. Obviously somebody's struggling with the stepping and could, could be four, four lessons before you start yeah, to move yeah. on to other stuff. But yeah, yeah because, because of the difference on those images like straight away, it's almost a bit silly not to kind of move into it. Yeah. Right, so take a, another step back from the, give yourself a bit more room, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, and then what you're gonna do, you can, do, you can still do it one-handed back. Uh-huh. Right, go ahead. And then in, in, that's it. Right, when you're doing the steps, really feel that like, it's like up, left knee in together, uh -huh. left knee in, hit. And then you'll get that same look with that little slide as well on the last right. step. Whereas like yours looked a little crabby, a little like here, and it was like, Okay. Off I go, do you know what I mean? So yeah. just what, you, what we're giving you the sensation of is like that kind of pressure into your lead foot yeah. and then it coming back together. Lead foot together. And what you'll notice as I bring my legs together, I'm essentially doing that little move that you were doing earlier. It's like here, together, yeah. here, together. And again, it's just pressure in the ground. Yeah. Step. Nice. So when you leave your arms up, you can then smash it. And then look at the right foot again. Yeah, yeah. That's pressure trace. That's what it should look like. Yeah. That's, that's mega. I definitely find it, I think my body, I find it harder to like coordinate this one. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and that is because... I don't know if it's because there's more to think about. So I'm like, obviously naturally, I want to step and my arms want to come in. Yeah, that's yeah. What I was like. Yeah, it's because you're trying to coordinate your upper and lower body together. Yeah. That's obviously more difficult, but also you've been used to being stuck on your left side. Yeah. So it's unnatural for you to want to move that way. Yeah. You know, in the golf swing, like you don't want to move in this way to hit because you're so used to being uh, okay, yeah. here. It's like an unnatural move. Like a lot of people, when you get them to do step drills for the first time, they'll, they'll do this one, no problem. And then their left leg will get like stuck in the ground. They're like, they can't lift it off the ground because they're so used to keeping pressure yeah. there that like they physically can't step back to. And, and a lot of people, it takes them a while to get used to kind of that bit so that they can then use it. Nice. And I think this is a great one for you to really not, when you go to hit, to not, so you go like this on your last step, yeah. to then not go, to then go and hit. It's like, right, here, in, in, and then I'm gone. Right. Yeah, no, not none of that, because it. that's what steepens it, look. So you, go, you do it nicely, last step, uh -huh. but then you lift back up, uh, yeah. oh, which yeah. then makes you yank it down. So that shows you that's what's happening, mm. you know, in those initial videos. So if we, you imagine on the walking, if we can start getting that to deliver like it does in the left hand back, yeah. two hand hit, then it just shows you that, how extreme that kind of want to bring it over and across yeah. is. So you've just got to feel like when you get to that last step and you're going into hit, you don't, Yeah. it's not this, it's bang, bang and then it's just gone yeah. and then you'll deliver the club how you want to yeah so that is actually a great drill for you yeah yeah so i think at the moment i wouldn't do any more than that mate if i'm honest in regards to when you're at home for at least a couple of weeks so do a load of step obviously taking away your left hand pushing it yeah. adding my right hand at the top step in here's exactly. that that's a great one this step will then help us with transition yeah just yeah. those two for now, yeah. I think that's a great start. Um, and then off the back of that then, then we can, once we've got those two working well, we can then start to kind of change how you kind of work through the ball a little bit. Um, we can start to kind of control those arms a bit more and get it looking a bit more like the towel drill. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I would start it, I would start with those two, just because I think, I think you're getting a great introduction to club travel through this. You're getting a great introduction to that kind of lateral progression and then and then kind of the transitional thing quite clearly today you want to kind of pull and get open yeah so i think that you being allowed to kind of feel that movement in without any of this is really big for you and then you'll be able to kind of blend it together quite well. I think, I think that deals with almost kind of like two thirds of the swing. Yeah. And to be honest, mate, even if you just start getting the backswing stuff really good, that'll make you want to pull down less and, 
and because you won't want to try and create this force because you've already kind of got it like here you'll be less inclined to want to create it that's why your kind of plane changes and your body moves so quickly on the first drill because it's all working better you don't have to do any of that yeah. it wasn't until we put the ball back in that the other bit starts to come back out again um but that's obviously been there for a while hasn't it yeah, yeah. um so we've got to kind of if we can control that bit and then the over time get this bit looking really good i think that will probably take you six to eight weeks to look really good um but even if you're just kind of having the concept of it and the feel of it, I think that'll help you when you get on the golf course and when you're out here, just start strike. You'll strike it better anyway, just yeah. with the right thoughts. But obviously in time, we want it to start looking like that too. Um, but yeah, mate, I think that's, uh, I think that's a great yeah. place for you to start. Yeah. Liam has now got his own coaching website called tourgolfnetwork.com. It costs £12.99 to be a member and that gives you access to all the drills he uses in his long game, short game, and putting. You can get a one month free trial just by going to the website, and Liam has been kind enough to offer anyone who signs up via this video a free swing analysis. If you want that, and you know, why wouldn't you? It's free, and he knows loads about golf, then yeah, all you've got to do is email him a video of your swing down the line and one face on, and then he'll come back to you yeah, with his analysis and the drills that he thinks would most benefit your swing. So yeah, just send your videos to liamrobinsongolf at gmail.com, put Rob video as the um, subject line, and yeah, he'll come back to you as soon as he can. I'll put the web address and the email address in the description down below so you can just click on those, or copy and paste them, whatever. But yeah, let me know if you go through it and how you get on. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the future.